Do you know sugar tastes good on the tongue, but it could be poisonous when it gets into the body? Stay tuned and watch this video and your lady Salome will show you how dangerous and poisonous sugar could be to your body. Hello my viewers, welcome to Ezra Wellness where you learn proving ways to healthy living. This is your lady Salome Adamaku. I'm a nurse by profession. If you want to learn proving ways to healthy living, subscribe to my channel. And when you do, click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my favorite videos. Thank you so much to you all my viewers, my subscribers, my followers on Facebook, on Instagram. I want to say a big thank you for watching my videos and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your encouragement, your comments. It's really appreciated. This channel was pretty much made for you to encourage you, my viewer out there, to lead a healthy life. So I'm glad that you're following and you're watching. And I hope you are putting them into practice. Today, I want to talk about the effect of sugar on the body. Sugar is loved by the young, the old, the rich, the poor. But the only place that sugar tastes good is in the mouth, on the tongue. But when it gets inside the body, it doesn't do anything than ruin havoc and cause poison and dangerous things for the body. In a study that was done in the United States, it followed adults for 14 years, men and women. This study concluded that people who drink a lot of sugary beverages were at higher risk of dying from cardiovascular diseases and cancer. This was published in the journal, The Circulation. Another study that was also done in Europe, and it was in the Washington Post, it followed adults, and uh, that is men, women, for about eight years in 10 countries in Europe. And this study involved over 400,000 people, found that people who drink sugary beverages one to two a day were at higher risk of dying early. And these people that were in the study were people who had no pre-existing condition. So that is how dangerous sugar could be if you tend to consume it in higher quantities. And the one thing that I want you to think about is normally when you talk about sugar, people say, oh, I don't put sugar in my tea. I don't put sugar in this. I don't drink soda and that. But there is other sources of sugar that we normally don't think of. So this is why I want to draw your attention today after telling you the effect and what to do. Sugar is found in a lot of foods like bread. You talk about ketchup, salad dressing, granola bars, cereal, milk. All these foods have sugar in them. Also, the foods that we eat like rice. Rice, even though it's complex sugar, is high amount of sugar. When you eat it at the end of the day, it turns to sugar in your body. So if you eat rice three times a day, think about the amount of sugar that you're giving to your body. Pasta, when you eat a lot of protein, at the end of the day, it turns to glucose in the body because the body does not store protein. It turns it into glucose and it's stored. Also fruits, even though it's natural source of sugar, when you consume them all the time in larger quantities, fructose is also sugar that is also contributing to the amount of sugar in the body. So these are the things that I wanted to think about. So what are some of the effects of the sugar on the body that makes it so dangerous and poisonous? One, sugar has been linked to weight gain because when you eat simple sugars, like you eat donut, drink soda, things like that, what happens is that your blood sugar peaks. And when the blood sugar peaks, insulin is released. And when insulin is released, the work of the insulin is to make sure that it brings your blood sugar down to lower levels. And what it does is help the cell to pick up and the rest that is not picked up is stored as fat. So that means when you eat a lot of higher concentrations of sugar, you store more of them as fat. And over time, you gain weight. In one study, people who drink about two cans of soda a day were seen to gain about 15 pounds in a year. So that is how sugar contributes to weight gain. Another way that sugar also contributes to weight gain is 
Sugar suppresses the hormone that makes you feel full, the leptin hormone. Because of that, you eat a lot. And eating a lot means you packing on empty calories that do not help. And these calories all tend to fat at the end of the day and they contribute to weight gain. Another thing that the sugar also does whilst you are eating them so much is that sugar causes inflammation by contributing to leaky gut. Because most of the foods that we eat, what it does is that the higher the food that have higher concentrations of sugars also contain lactans and these contribute to leaky gut and then leaky gut leads to inflammation in the body and the inflammation also leads to suppressed immune system and especially now that the countries are opening back people are going to work and we still have the coronavirus even though it's, it looks like it's low key it's still there the best thing you want to do is you want to keep focusing on boosting your immune system so that in case you get out there and you get in contact with somebody, your best defense against this virus is your immune system. So you want to keep sugar away as much as you can to make sure that you boost your immune system. Another thing that the sugar also does is that sugar feeds the bad bacteria in our stomach. And by doing that, you fuel these bad bacteria that produce toxins that is bad for the body. And when you do that, you also starve the good bacteria that is going to give you a lot of benefit. You know, when it comes to the plant paradox at Ezra Wellness, we focus also on the bad bacteria and the good bacteria that is in the stomach. Because remember, you're not just you. You have friends living inside of you and you eat, you don't eat for yourself, you eat for them also. So when you eat more sugar, you feed the bad bacteria and when the bad bacteria is stronger, they prompt you to eat more of the sugar. That is why you get a lot of craving for it when you eat more sugar. But when you don't eat it and you starve them off, then you're getting rid of them and make sure that the good bacteria take charge and they will help you with your health. One thing that I also want to talk about that the sugar does is that sugar causes non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So how does this happen? Sugar do this by, when you talk about sugar, it's fructose and glucose equals to sucrose. But when you eat it, that is 50% each, the rest of the body is able to digest the glucose, but the liver digests the fructose. So what happened is that over time, this liver also stores some of the fat and it causes non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And what was scary about this when I read it is that it's happening in teens and preteens. So parents, we need to wake up. If you don't buy the sugary drinks at home, your children do not have the option than to drink water because that is what is good for the body. So if you want to get rid of your sugar cravings, the first place you want to start is in the stomach. You want to starve the bad bacteria and make sure that your good bacteria get stronger. And when they get stronger, they will help you to avoid these cravings. So if you want to do that, check out my video on how to kickstart your immune system and you'll be able to starve these bad bacteria and make sure the good ones take charge and will help you with your weight. One thing that manufacturers are doing is that they hide sugar in their products. So sometimes it's very hard to find sugar because of the different names that they give to sugar. So what you want to do is that to make sure you avoid sugar, make sure you are reading the labels of products when you pick up from the store because sugar could be hiding there and you might not know. Some of the ways that it's written is that you will see high corn syrup, you will see fructose, you will see sucrose, you will see dextrose, lactose, maltose, malt syrup. You will see like cane sugar, brown sugar, trying to prevent it makes it look like it's good. Every sugar is sugar. Honey, gave, all of them are sugar. So read these labels and pay attention to them. 
One thing I also found on labels is that the sugar is written in grams. And because it's written in grams, it's very hard to convert it. So sometimes you don't see, you don't, you cannot not imagine how it looks like. So I want to go over some drinks that are really common and tell you the grams and the amount of sugar that it represents. When I did the math, what I found is that when you talk about five grams of sugar in a drink or in anything, five grams was equivalent to one teaspoon. So when you pick up a product in the store, and it's saying that it have 10 grams of sugar in it, that means it have two teaspoons of sugar in that product. So with that said, let me show you some of the product that I have here. I have tea. This pure leaf tea is something that a lot of people love to drink. But this pure leaf tea, if it doesn't say unsweetened, it has... 38 grams of sugar and 38 grams of sugar was equivalent to eight teaspoons and a half of sugar eight teaspoons this is eight teaspoons of sugar imagine you have all this sugar in this little bottle of drink also one drink that is one of our favorite was snapple and snapple as most people in my culture love this drink, Snapple, when you drink the whole bottle of Snapple, Snapple has 59 grams of sugar. And 59 grams of sugar is 11 and a half teaspoon full. And this is how 11 and a half teaspoon full of sugar look like. So if you're drinking it and you're thinking, oh, this is just a good Snapple, no, it's loaded with sugar and you want to stay away from it. Also, soft drinks. Like root beer I have here, kind of soda, things like that have 46 grams of sugar and 46 grams of sugar is equivalent to nine teaspoons full of sugar. This is it. So if you drink that, nine teaspoons of sugar, you ingest it at one time. Also, orange juice. This orange juice that I have here, it's about a glass of orange juice, but it has... 34 grams of sugar and 34 grams of sugar was seven teaspoons full of sugar. That's how much it is. Also, apple juice. Apple juice have 37 grams of sugar and 37 grams of sugar have about seven and a half teaspoons of sugar in there. That's it. Pure sugar. That you drink and then yogurt i know we all think yogurt is healthy but yogurt have 26 grams of sugar and the 26 gram is five and a quarter teaspoons of sugar and this is how it looks like so my viewer you want to make every effort to get rid of sugar because it causes all this havoc especially parents with the kids obesity in America, about 75% of people are obese. It's a pandemic now. You want to make sure you get rid of sugar out of your diet. And this fatty liver disease that is happening in younger people, you want to get rid of sugar at all costs. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you make sure your family drink water. And that is what is good for the body. I want to say thank you for watching and thank you for your time. Remember, this is Ezra Wellness, where you learn proving ways to healthy living. Thank you.